My name is Dr. Thomas Bach and I work at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, my work is very interdisciplinary and therefore I am based both at the Psychology and Neurology Department and I also work at the Centre of Cognitive Aging and Cognitive Epidemiology where the work I want to speak about has been conducted. There has been a lot of research on bilingualism over the last 10 or 20 years. But what I think was a very important substantial difference is that in the last years we have got some papers showing that bilingualism can delay the onset of dementia by four to five years. In fact, one of our own papers last November showed in a big group of over 600 patients. And that means that this is not only interesting from kind of purely scientific point of view, but also from the point of view of of uh, population health, it means that speaking a second or third language might be a factor of cognitive reserve, a factor which at least gives some kind of delay against cognitive aging and dementia. What I find particularly important about this paper are two aspects. One is that all the research before found it very difficult to answer the so-called question of reverse causality or, in simpler terms, chicken and egg question. So is it that people become bilingual and therefore improve their cognitive functions? Or is it that people who have better cognitive functions are more likely to become bilingual? This is very difficult to address because you would need to know how people's functions were before they started learning a language. Now, in Edinburgh, we are very fortunate to have the Lothian Burns cohort, which is a group of participants who have been tested cognitively when they were 11 at school. Uh, that was in, they were born in 1936 and were tested in 1947. And we had a chance to retest them again a few years ago. So in that way, we can compare whether having learned a second language have led to cognitive improvement beyond what you would expect from their baseline cognitive uh, performance. And indeed, we found that there was an effect which is not explained just by differences before learning a second language. So I think that's a very powerful and quite unique evidence. The second reason why I find it interesting and important is because we are looking especially at people who are not the kind of classical early bilinguals who learned two languages from their parents at home and so on. There were people who learned their second language when later at school or even in early adulthood. So it means that in order to have the beneficial effect of bilingualism, you do not have to be a born bilingual, so to say. Learning it later in life can also confer similar benefits. The paper will be published in Annals of Neurology on Monday, 2nd of June 2019.